Many thanks to PCB Wave for sponsoring this video. Good day everyone and welcome back to the X Explorer for another video. Uh, first of all, I'd like to apologize for any possible noises, but there's an entire construction process going on around me, so uh, now and then I might have some background noises. Now, the today's video, it's about a comparison between two different types of RF chokes. Um, I'm working on a permanent antenna setup over here for my camper and of course I will need an RF choke. They are both designed to do the same thing. Um, this one is made with coax cable, this one is made with insulated copper wire. All I have to do is to do uh, some measurements and see which one performs better when it comes to attenuation. And once I pick the one that I'd like to use, then uh, all I have to do is to <laughs> prepare a nice enclosure for it. The one that I'm using right now, it's a repurposed uh, electrical enclosure, plastic enclosure, and it's pretty old, a bunch of holes in it. I've been using this one for a bunch of uh, testing purposes. And yeah, I think it's time for a properly designed um, enclosure. So I thought about a 3D printed version that would also be weatherproof, just in case sometimes I would go portable, um, my um, RF choke would be also uh, weatherproof. And who can come to the rescue when it comes to 3D printed projects, if not my friends at PCB Way. I spoke many times to friends and subscribers on YouTube about ordering PCB boards and imagine that many of them didn't know that PCB Way also offers great 3D printing services. And uh, the idea is very simple. You design a nice PCB board for your transceiver, for example, and then at the same time you would design a nice enclosure for that transceiver and you order both of them together and when they arrive you put it together and voila, you have a nice finished transceiver with a great PCB board and a nice 3D printed enclosure, both from PCB way. So you don't have to keep ordering uh, here and there different bits and pieces. So I think it's a great option for me and uh, all I have to do now is just to learn how to design this and then uh, make a nice order from my friends at PCB Way. Because remember, I'm always saying this, PCB Way is the way. Anyway, let's uh, get inside really quick, have a closer look to these two different RF chokes and uh, I'm trying to decide which one I get to use. All right, here we are inside with both uh, RF chokes uh, prepared for measurement. I have two different versions, as I was saying. Uh, the version with the coax cable, it's basically five turns of coax cable on one side, then the sixth turn goes through the coax cable and comes back around five more turns and it comes out on this side. Um, over here, I have um, 12 turns on one side and 12 turns on the other side. I'm using um, a pair of wires, a black one and a white one for each side. So I start in one side, I end up in this side over here on the top and then I do the same thing for the other side and then I connect the, um, the white wires together over here, the black ones over here and then I do the same thing on the opposite side. When it comes to connecting it to the um, to the coax cable, well, basically the center wire of the coax gets connected to the center pin of the BNC connector and the trace to the uh, ground connection. And I just put two separate um, BNC connectors on each side. And it's valid the same thing over here. Uh, the white wire in my case goes to the center pin of the BNC connector and the black one to the ground connection. Over here the same thing. So I think right now it's time to do some measurements and uh, see which one it's better. So I prepared the Nano VNA in advance. I calibrated. I calibrated the Nano VNA with the cables uh, connected to the Nano VNA just to avoid uh, any small errors even though I might have small uh, readings in uh, small errors in the readings uh, because as we all know things are not always perfect but at least I get to have an idea about how well these RF chokes perform. Uh, in order to do the measurements I also prepared the jig. I have an SMD uh, connector over here and another one over here. 
so basically I will connect the center cable or to the center pin of the SMD cable I'll do the same thing on this side and as you can tell the ground it's shorted between both SMD connectors now let's put everything together and do some measurements so I soldered everything over here the first RF choke that I'm going to test is going to be the one with the Cox cable now let's take a look at the Nano VNA now I apologize for the reflection of the camera but this is the best I can do at this point so let's take a look somewhere around 30 megahertz I have about minus 34.4 dB let's go just out of curiosity somewhere around 21 megahertz this is uh, somewhere around minus 36.15 something like that dB somewhere about 14 megahertz I have minus 35 dB and let's go to 7 megahertz here I have minus 32 dB so it's not bad it's a lot better than what I was expecting <clears throat> I'm sorry let's go to 3.5 megahertz or somewhere around there minus 28 dB so yeah uh, probably if I would use my uh, material 31 uh, probably would be a little bit better on the 80 meters band as well and especially in if I would like to use the 160 meters band then definitely it would be a lot better but now let's put the other uh, the other RF choke and see how that one performs all right now I connected the second RF choke the one made with the insulated copper wire let's see the measurements for this one and surprise surprise I was honestly expecting a better results from this one comparing to the one with the coax cable but there's good news <laughs> that uh, the one with the coax cable also performs pretty well so um, I wonder if the number of turns might influence this and um, things might get better because I remember in the past uh, I made one with uh, only 9 turns and I believe on 30 megahertz I was somewhere around minus 44 minus 45 dB so I'll try to do that as well and uh, test it just to see if it's better if I use less turns but uh, anyway I'm pretty happy so I have minus 38 dB on 30 megahertz let's go somewhere around 21 megahertz here I have minus 37 as well it's pretty close to minus 40 so it's not bad uh, on 14 megahertz I have minus 36 dB on trip oh sorry on 7 megahertz or close I have minus 33 and let's go to minus 3.5 somewhere around there minus 30 so it's not bad now which one would you pick <laughs> uh, because they're very similar so uh, it's not such a big difference and I'm going to tell you how I'm going to pick the one that I'm going to use so here's the problem that I had in the past when it comes to RF chokes uh, so I'm testing an antenna for example and I'm measuring the uh, the performance with the nano VNA I'm measuring a certain SWR after I connect the RF choke that SWR will change depending on the RF choke that I'm using and the position of the RF choke so I've learned that uh, lately at least that the best position to install the RF choke is as close as possible to the transceiver and it will also uh, be good for the transceiver and it also uh, it will not influence so much the SWR reading from the antenna but still there is a slight change uh, in SWR as soon as I install the RF choke so what I will do right now the, the way I'm going to pick this uh, the uh, final RF choke that I would like to use uh, probably I'm not going to do all, the, all those measurements into this video just because I don't want to waste your time but I will sure let you know about the results when I'm going to write the blog article about this uh, comparison and about the RF choke in general because it's good to write an article about that too 
Uh, but yeah, I'm going to pick the one that will influence the SWR uh, reading from the antenna the less. Uh, so yeah, um, right now I, I, I would say that they're pretty similar in performance. It's not such a big difference, uh, so any of these two will work well. The advantage, I believe, of the one with coax, and I tend to use this one, <laughs> Uh, it might be because uh, I might not even need an enclosure for this one. Um, but in case I decide on this one, then definitely I need a, a proper enclosure for this. But the advantage of the one with the toroid, it would be that I would maybe just leave a longer end over here and put straight um, BNC connector that I would connect the, the coax to the transceiver. And then this side will go straight to the other side um, to the, to the antenna basically and I would have uh, just one more BNC connector over there so this way I would remove two connectors over here which would be probably these two that I have on the box right here and two connectors less it means less losses so I, I believe it's, it's going to be a good thing uh, on this one I believe the only way would be if I would uh, solder the coax cable straight to this uh, end of the cables and somehow fix the coax cable uh, into the enclosure and then uh, glue it pretty well over there to make it strong enough to stay um, and will, it will not come out and at the same time uh, to make it um, weatherproof. So yeah. It's pretty hard to pick, right? I mean, the measurements are pretty similar, so uh, both of them have advantages and disadvantages, I believe. But uh, yeah, I think uh, any any of them will do well uh, when it comes to RF chokes. So anyway, I hope you found this useful, uh, this video useful, and um, yeah, I believe that's it for today. Um, I will do some more tests over here uh, to convince myself which one to use. And uh, I guess I'll see you in the next video. Until then, thanks so much for watching and uh, have a beautiful and relaxing weekend. 73 from Yankee Oscar 6, Delta X-Ray Echo.